we got our first exhaust valve out and show you guys what it looks like so when you pop it out you're basically compressing the spring and then you remove these two collets don't lose these guys they look like little two little half moon and uh, they go in between this little valve the top of the valve right here the valve stem and that's how they're held in place and then right here that right there is your valve stem this little seal here it's your valve stem that prevents oil from the head going down <coughs> into the cylinder head and then the valve just pops right up like this that's kind of how it is right there exhaust valve the valve spring compressor clamp that i'm using is the one made by otc 4572 got it off of amazon 60 dollars this is the one that Otran was using in his video. So I figure if he was doing it long enough and it worked perfectly after some adjustments, works perfectly. And it has these windows right there so you can take out those little two uh, poppets. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all of them out. And when you remove them out, same thing like those um, the, valve, the valve caps, you want to make sure they go into the same order. So we're going to get a little cardboard box and then stick them into exhaust one two three four five through 12 and then we want to put them back into their order the valve spring goes like this i'm not sure if it makes any difference if you end up flipping it around they seem like they're both level but in my case i'm just going to go ahead and make sure i keep them aligned and keep them the same um, orientation that they came out of like that and then these guys right here um it doesn't matter which one they go to you can mix these guys up and they all they can all go mix match along us but for me i'm gonna keep the springs and the valves in the same uh same same valve that it goes into there you can see all the carbon deposit pretty nasty i'm not sure i'm gonna clean it i saw a few video where they use uh brass brass wire brush and you want to make sure it's brass because brass is a soft metal and it's not going to ding into your valve. But other than that, it looks in good shape. It's not cracked or bent or anything like that. Up here, smooth. And you just need to clean down here. You're not up here, just down here where, they, um, where it goes into the cylinder. So. This is the last exhaust valve number 12 so the way I'm storing it is I'm just going like this and putting them away this way just like that and being very careful not to bump it but exhaust intake I'm just gonna do one at a time so I'm just gonna do the exhaust first take these out put them in and then i'll do the intake um, take my time doing it no rush right now i'm cleaning all the valves i just started i'm cleaning it with the brass bushing you want to use the brass wire brass is soft and then i'm putting it on a drill and just spinning up through the wire this is just the first one this is the exhaust the last exhaust one and looks pretty dang good missed a little spot but for the most part it's nice and clean man it's crazy. I'll go ahead and do some before and after. Here's our next valve. This is a quick before and after. So this is what it looks like right now. And you don't want to grind on top of this section here. Just down below here. Not up here. Because this is where it goes to the valve guide. You want this to be nice and polished and smooth. So just where the carbon is. Clean that up. Clean down there. And the front of the, um, the face of the valve. So this is what it looks like right here. Safety glasses. Put it in the drill bit. Let this get up to speed. And just do it and check it here and there so it's already clean. We're under the face of it. So 
here's the aftermath. Look at that. All nice and clean. Not super polished, but man, it is clean though. Nice and smooth now. Beautiful, man. And guess what? We got uh, we got 12, so we got 10 more to go. So this is just a matter of tedious work. Take your time. I'm going to take my time cleaning it. One thing I will recommend is that you guys saw me tape this right here with um, blue masking tape so it doesn't get damaged in here. Don't use blue masking tape. It just takes too long. Um, once you want to peel it out, it takes forever to peel this out. So I'm going to switch over to some black masking tape, which is a bit more thicker and it comes out more smoother. So if you have blue tape, use it. But if not, try to find some other tape. So this is the tape I'm going to be using. It's black and it just comes out more easily. So here's our next valve. See how dirty it is. <coughs> All white. Just like that. This will come out more easier. This is our sixth valve so far. Uh, I'm just taking my time, spending about maybe a minute or two minutes on each valve. Um, <laughs> this grinder produced a lot of wind, so a lot of the wind is blowing at me, <laughs> making my face kind of chilly. <laughs> um, so make sure you have some kind of mask or something. But super fun. It's just tedious work and being detailed. You can get very detailed, but so far it's clean. I put these back into the cylinder head and it's so much more smoother. It spins freely now. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of it. You don't need to, You guys don't need to see me do it. I've been reusing this. So I've just been taking this off and putting on the new one. And uh, makes it more easier because it's not so sticky anymore as a new one. So you can reuse this tape. Here's a quick look of a clean one and in one that's not been clean. So this one is not clean yet. And then this one just got done brushing. All right, beautiful. If you guys are doing your head gasket, I highly recommend you do your valves while you're there. Clean them up and put some new valves in. I just finished cleaning all the valves. I'll go ahead and clean the cylinder tomorrow with a um, Dremel with a uh, brass. Make sure everything's brass. I'll go ahead and clean that tomorrow and then I'll go ahead <laughs> and start lapping the valves and then put new seals in and go from there. But while we're here, uh, we got something in the mail. This is the Wits Ends keychain. So this is for the EGR delete. And this one goes on the cylinder head right here on the exhaust side. So I'm going to go ahead and install this right now. And then this one is the one that goes on the upper intake manifold. So these are really nice. Uh, looks like it's CNC aluminum. Beautiful. You will have to go and get some shorter bolts. These are the original bolts. And you can see they are way too long. So I went and got shorter bolts. Um, these are like the M8 1.25. There we have it. The EGR delete plate on the cylinder head. These are the new bolts. Along with a new gasket inside of it so that's all taken care of i'll go ahead and do the top intake manifold this weekend uh once i get that pressure wash first and then all this stuff can be installed for now super nice and slick right now i'm using my dremel with a brass wire brush make sure it's brass because brass won't damage it i went ahead and removed my intake valves already and what i'm doing is i'm just going over these you guys see all these little um where the uh, where the valve surface mates right here this is all carbon and stuff i'm just going over and cleaning all this stuff right here all these residue i'm not going deep inside because it's way too dirty it's not worth cleaning it we're just cleaning the ceiling surface right at the edge right here and i'm slowly do i'm using a slow speed and slowly just going nice and smooth letting the dremel do the work and then we'll go ahead and give it a quick wash uh break clean right now it's time to take out all the old valve stem it's made of metal 
and then it's a rubber right here and this is what seals this is what seals the oil from the top of the cylinder head not going down to the pistons um so these things are pretty tricky to get out you gotta kind of just pick them i've been using the pick and just going around this around the edge and pulling them up 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 so we got 24 valves so 22 to go after this we'll go ahead and clean it um use brake part cleaner spray the whole cylinder head down and then we'll go ahead and start lapping it so the way that i'm getting out these valve stems is i'm using this pick that's a 90 degree and i'm going inside of it and i'm pulling it at the edge just like that and i'm pulling it like that so you just have to go do that sometimes you'll get it with one shot sometimes you might have to pull from this side and then go on this side and then just work your way up and back and forth um, don't try to go in here because that's not gonna work so go on this side because the side right here is all metal also just noticed that my intake was the circular one and then my exhaust was a bit more different it has like a flange at the bottom you guys see that flange style so it's just for the record this is the exhaust and that's intake so not sure that's the difference but once I get my new kit I'll take a look at them, so keep that as a comparison. Keep these for reference until we uh, before we trash it. <sighs> we finally got the upper oil pan out, the big one, and then we have the timing chain removed. You can see here the timing chain is pretty old. It's definitely started to worn out, and I'm glad I'm replacing it. You can see the guys right here. It's cracking a little bit. And the main thing was that I think the chain was pretty much stretched out because the cam chain tensioner was fully extended when it was in there. So here's the sprocket. Sprocket's in good condition. All the tubes are still there. But we'll go ahead and keep this for a souvenir. And we'll order some new parts. This is what it looks like if you guys have never seen it before. That front sprocket is your um, the crank sensor, the crank sensor sprocket, and then the one behind it is the drive that drives this gear, that drives that gear, which is your power steering. So we'll leave that in place, and then when it's time to clean it, we'll take them out and clean it up. There's a coolant O-ring here, and there's an oil O-ring here. So very important that you get those out. Just finished cleaning my injectors. Used some brake cleaner. Wiped them down really good. Got all the dirt oil off it. I didn't clean the inside. Like I didn't um, put power to them and spray them out. We're just going to clean them. And I just installed the new rubbers. And the O-ring. And then there's another rubber that goes on the bottom. We'll install that last once we put the injectors into the rails. But this is what they look like. The pink Denzel. That's the part number 23250740. All nice and clean. A little bit of dirt here and there, but for the most part, this is what the injectors look like. Looks like it's a two hole. Welcome back to another video. Um, just want to give you guys a refresh on this video where we got the cylinder head back. I went ahead and took out all the valves, cleaned it like the video you guys just saw. And then yesterday I did my valve laps. So I ended up just lapping my exhaust valves, only the exhaust valve. I did end up taking the intake valves. I did. I took out the intake valves. I cleaned them off with the um, wire brush. And again, we're using a brass wire brush it's very important that you use a brass don't use a steel one like these guys this one here will damage your your thing so we went ahead and wire brushed the intake valves um, put the, all those back in i went ahead and lapped my my exhaust valve <coughs> um, that's my first time doing it and lapped it and installed them back on yesterday with new valve stems went ahead and installed them with a new valve stem i don't want to tilt this over because it's kind of 
it's leaning on blocks but they're all installed it's all nice and clean went ahead and installed all my exhaust stud i wanted to install the exhaust studs um while the head is out just to make sure that they go in nice and smooth um, just in case if we have any issue where it doesn't go in and the head is already on the truck so went ahead and installed all the exhaust stud install my hangers put all my bolts back to where they belong and then um I also took the time to install on the intake side. Um, flip it. On the intake side, we have all these sensors. Went ahead and installed all that back in. So the cylinder head is officially finished. We're done with the cylinder head. When it's time to install this, I'm just gonna go and take it outside, give it one more great um, quick brake clean. Just clean all the surface where all the gas is gonna go. Clean the bottom of the um, cylinder head. And then we're done. We'll be ready to install this. During the mean, uh, in the meantime, um, I, since I bought this wire brush, I've been so addicted to it. I went ahead and cleaned out all my nuts and bolts. Um, these right here, I haven't cleaned them yet, but all my nuts and bolts, um, like all the oil pan, I went ahead and degreased them, and then I wire brushed the head, and all that old oil and dirt has been just that all that came out so it's all nice and clean now i still have some that i have to clean but most part of them most of most of them are clean this is the alternator bracket i'll have to clean this one and everything else is nice and clean so everything is pretty much ready to go i'm still waiting for my pressure washer to come in um i broke the pump on my pressure washers so when i use it it's not spraying full power so i'm waiting for that part to come in and once that come in i'll go ahead and degrease the oil pans the lower and the upper upper and lower and then we'll go ahead and um, degrease it now i want to get all this dirt off if i can't get this dirt off then i'll use my wire brush to brush as, as, as much as possible but for the main thing we want to get all these old gasket off so all this stuff right here we want to get off and then this is for the uh, lower oil pan i went ahead and scraped this already so this is pretty much good but i want to like all this oil grudge i want to wash all that off all this stuff over here i want to get all that stuff nice and clean so um that's pretty much it for this video and I'll update you guys on the next video right now. Um, the only thing we're waiting on right now is the timing chain kit. So I ordered the timing chain kit, all OEM Honda parts. No, not Honda, all, all OEM Toyota parts. And then um, we had the budget for a new radiator. So I went ahead and ordered a new OEM uh, Toyota radiator. No, not Toyota, a new um, AutoZone radiator. And we're gonna go from there. So once all that comes in, we'll start putting things back together and the wrenches is gonna start turning clockwise from here on so super excited and super stoked for everything and then i also went ahead and wire brushed my valve cover so it's super super nice and shiny i'm not gonna paint it but i think i am gonna go buy me some high temp um clear coat and at least uh, um, at least clear coat it so we're gonna leave everything a bare aluminum though so that's it that's gonna be it for this video i'll keep you guys posted on the next video once we get the parts in but right now i'm officially in the stage of just cleaning 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 and getting preparation prepped up because you want to make sure you disassemble clean prep have parts ready and then once everything's in you go ahead and slowly take your time installing it and man i'm super excited guys keep you guys posted follow the instagram nanu underscore 44 see you guys next time Bye bye